Alright guys, welcome to this presentation about development and more specifically we're going to discuss metaverse development and we're going to speak about full stack metaverse development. In this video, in this presentation, I will explain what full stack really means when we're speaking about the metaverse, what kind of challenges we face when we are building full stack dApps in the metaverse and what solutions there are on the market to solve them. First and foremost, my name is Ivan. I'm known as Ivan. Ivan on Tech Online. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Morales, and we do Web3 infrastructure, Web3 APIs, Web3 SDKs, and all kinds of other tools necessary in order to have a good life as a developer. Because at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. It's all about developers having a great life. <laughs> and that's really what leads to mass adoption. And we need mass adoption. So that's why we go to work every day to ensure that crypto gets mass adoption by helping developers. First and foremost, why should we care about the metaverse? Why is it important? Well, this is really the next frontier. Just like the smartphone became the platform that captured everyone's attention approximately 15 years ago, the same will happen with the virtual reality and, uh, and augmented reality soon as well. So the trend is that we are moving more and more towards digital. Our experiences are more digital than ever before. And if you follow the trend and you extrapolate the trend, you're going to see that it's a good chance that our kids spend most of their time in some kind of virtual environment. And there's a good chance there's going to be either VR or, or AR. And that's where commerce is going to happen. That's where meetings are going to happen. We're, we're going to meet different people, just like the smartphone is where we meet different people today. So there's a good chance that the metaverse really is the next frontier. And metaverse Nobody can really define it. You ask Mark Zuckerberg, who renamed the whole company into Meta, he cannot even define it. But we can basically say it's some kind of platform where we have all kinds of different applications that has to do more with VR and AR than with flat screens that we have right now. And right now, we are like pre we're pre-metaverse. <laughs> we're building all these metaverse experiences, but they're more like games, more than metaverse. But we got to start somewhere. And we got to see where is the world heading? Where are all of these different trends taking us? And then when you look at different financial analysts who are predicting, for example, 1 trillion revenue opportunity in the metaverse or 13 trillion in the metaverse, different financial analysts have different sizes of imagination, but they all speak in trillions. So this means that this is a very important industry. And one of the biggest tech companies, Facebook, renamed into Meta. And uh, there is something here. We know that there is something here. We still cannot really define Metaverse ourselves. And nobody, nobody can. But we know it's going to be something with VR, with AR. It's going to be something where we are meeting different people, not through screens, but through more immersive experiences. And of course, if the tech is there, if the immersive tech is on the market, it's a no-brainer that we are going to spend even more time online. But as this is happening, we do see troubling, troubling developments. The fact that, for example, Meta wants to take nearly 50% of the revenue as a cut, just like Apple takes 30% of the revenue on the iPhone, the same is going to happen with the metaverse. If we allow the tech giants, the big tech, to own metaverse and to control it, and this is really why Web3 exists. Many people ask me, hey, Ivan, what is Web3? You speak to relatives, you speak to friends, what is Web3? And too many people explain it in the wrong way. They start speaking about, oh, trading, NFTs, staking, yield, all of that stuff. But really, it's about one thing and one thing only. That's digital ownership, digital property rights. That is what is Web3. And that is why it's so important when we are speaking about metaverse. Because if it is the case that we are getting more digital, more immersed, then, of course, you got to have ownership rights. Because if these universes, digital universes, are very important to us and our friends and connections and ownership, whatever, whatever we have in those world, worlds is also important to us. It's important to have property rights. And right now online, we don't have property rights. You can be deplatformed from anywhere for whatever reason. You can be really removed from the digital world for whatever reason and all your assets with it. And this is where Web3 comes in. With currency, number one, that we have cryptocurrencies, but also with all kinds of other digital property rights. Just like Lens Protocol is now bringing property rights to social media, just like we do see NFTs bringing it to art and, collect and collections and so on and so forth. Anyway, we have to act. 
You understand that we have to act. It's very important that we come together and we do something and we act. Uh, and uh, th- th- what we just discussed is this, that uh, only Web3 can ensure digital ownership. And a grand journey begins. Why is it so difficult right now? We have this great technology, which is Web3, which gives property rights and ownership rights online. But why is it still so difficult? Why don't we have worldwide adoption? Well, because... There are a lot of things to think about. Well, number one, you got to take care of your on-chain logic. So here is where the smart contracts, the transactions, and the money flows actually happen on-chain. Then you got to do the off-chain. And this is, in many cases, the most difficult thing because you have many different blockchains. If you want to build a metaverse application that supports uh, Ethereum, Polygon, Binance, Solana, you got to parse a lot of data in real time. So really, you're building a big data application, but also it is real time. It's actually very difficult. And then you got to build a UI and UX logic on top of that. So these are the three layers of a full stack metaverse application. And if you look at the different technologies you have for the different layers, for the on-chain logic, you of course have Ethereum, Solana, Elrond, Polygon, and for on-chain, you build smart contracts and you use different programming languages such as, for example, Solidity for Ethereum. You can use Viper for Solidity uh, for uh, Ethereum as well and other EVM chains, but Solidity is by far the biggest. Then you have Rust on Solana and then you have all kinds of other different L2s and L1s. Uh, L1s. So this is the smart contract, the on-chain part, the money flows. This is where you need full decentralization. This is where your ownership is recorded. Then you got to do the off-chain logic. And here normally you would be doing some kind of back-end application, whether in Node.js or Java or .NET. And this is in order for you to make your application usable. Because although all of these things happen on-chain, how do you present them on a screen? How do you notify the user? How do you present the user with useful information, with useful UI? For that, you got to do a lot of indexing of the blockchain. And here is where you do see all of these different traditional backend technologies come in that can, for example, be used in order to extract data from on-chain, to put it into databases, to make it useful for users. And this is where most of the time is spent. It's on the backend because this is extremely difficult because it's really pushing the, the envelope when it comes to traditional Web2 technologies. Why? Well, because we have a very interesting use case where all of the data is real time. So it's very difficult to cache anything because everything is changing all the time. You think you, you have the data, but no. In one second, there's new data and now everything is to be, be updated. So just from a technical challenge, it's very interesting um, challenge and it's very u- unique challenge because you, you have big data, massive amounts of information flowing, especially if you're building cross-chain, and especially if some blockchains are spewing out, you know, tens of thousands of transactions per second, you got to parse all of that, you got to make sense of all of that, and uh, to make something useful out of it. Uh, and uh, yeah, this is extremely difficult, and this is really what, what we're doing. Morales started in order to make this easier, this whole backend thing easier. And then you have the front end, which basically connects your backend to get useful information, that, that has been taken originally from the blockchain, but just been uh, indexed, parsed, uh, where you can get real-time notifications and so on and so forth. Uh, and on the front end, you have React, Angular, Vue for web, Unity and Real for, for game and for game engines, um, and then iOS Android for mobile. So this is basically full stack for metaverse that you have. Because when we're see- thinking about this, this Im- Im- immersive experience, it's probably going to be uh, built using Unity and Unreal. Uh, specifically. It's going to be built using game engines. Uh, so what is the workflow? Well, the workflow is that, number one, you ha- got to create the smart contracts. That's very important. You use Solidity, Rust, Viper, or and then you use tools like uh, Hard Hat, Truffle, Foundry in order to deploy them, to test them, and so on and so forth. Then you got to connect to the backend. So we mentioned some use cases where you got to index a bunch of information, but if you are just starting out to build, let's say, some kind of game, the first thing you have to do is to authenticate the user because when you connect the wallet to your website, that's not authentication. It can be fully faked. I can create a fake wallet that, you know, you click connect wallet and it will say that I have a million tokens of of whatever. It's easily spoofed that address that you have when you just connect wallet. And then you have another a thing which is authentication, where you connect wallet, but then you also sign a message, you create a web session with the backend. And that's the first thing you have to figure out if you have a DAP that has users. How do you make authenticated sessions with the backend based on the wallet? All right. You got to figure that out. You got to figure it out. Then in real time, you got to know what the user does. Did the user trade? Did they swap something? Uh, and you got to do it in real time. Uh, and then you got to also watch smart contract activity. Did the smart contract do something? Did the smart contract uh, enter some kind of state? 
So all of this is real-time technologies that you have to build to watch what the user does, what kind of assets the user has, and to watch the, what the smart contract does and, and what, what kind of assets smart contract gets sent and that the smart contract sends out or means and so on and so forth. Uh, and then you got to connect this all to the front end. So you got to write SDKs and abstractions to make it all work. So this is the workflow that we need to follow when we are building full stack applications in, in the metaverse. And why is it so hard? Well, again, start with authentication. There are many chains and wallets that work differently, different standards. It's very security critical. So if you make some kind of mistake here, it's going to be very, very bad. And uh, it's going to be very, very critical mistake because by definition, it's security, it's user auth. Uh, and like we discussed here with the, all the things, it's enormous data pipelines. You got to build so much to do so little. And also the nodes are dumb. If you're connecting to an RPC node, you're, spending, you're, uh, you're wasting so much time because an RPC node cannot even tell you what kind of assets a user has. An RPC node cannot even tell you uh, all the metadata of an NFT because in many cases you got to do several requests to fetch it. So this is a mistake many people make, that they connect straight to their PC and not trying to build their app. It's kind of like connecting straight to the CPU when you're trying to build a website. Why would you do that? You can use HTML. Uh, so that is why it's so hard. And uh, what it results in is that you just want a small dApp, but now you need to have 10 engineers to do all of these pipelines. You're stuck fixing bugs and your competitors grill you because your competitors use uh, tools and solutions. And here is our tools and solutions that we're offering at Morales. And if you haven't seen us, you can go to morales.io. You see our website. You see our products, a bunch of different APIs and also authentication, which I will show you soon. And this is one of the key most adopted tech stacks right now in Web3. We started last year, but the growth has been insane because we're really focusing in on the biggest pain points. So let me continue discussing this. So first and foremost, we have an auth API, which means that you can connect your wallet, you can connect your, the, your user wallets to your backend very easily. And this is what we discussed uh, in the previous slide. How do you connect a wallet and you establish a session? But also, how do you connect the wallet, establish a session and integrate it with other identity providers such as Auth0? Because if we are to onboard, all of the Web2 developers into Web3 will got to be compatible with Web2 Web standards, such as Auth0, which is a very widely adopted solution, or with AWS Cognito and so on and so forth. So our Auth API does all of that. It really unites Web2 and Web3 identities and ensures that Web3 identities are very easy to use. Next is our Streams API. So this is all about getting webhooks whenever something happens. Whenever something happens on chain, whenever the user mints, burns, or does anything on chain, we give you real-time notifications. And right now it is via webhooks, and soon we're going to have different other technologies such as Kafka and so on and so forth. But you can go here to our website, morales.io, then you can go to products, and then you can read about the Streams API. So Streams API, it is launching this week, so you can, you can get early access here and you can read more about it. But this is one of the key systems that has been powering Morales for a very long time. And now we are opening it up, opening it up to the public because this is one of the most important building blocks in a real-time blockchain application. Next, uh, all the different APIs, whether it is an FT API, which is the biggest right now in the industry. Uh, we really started the first NFT API last year, and then we did see so many problems people had without our NFT API. So we really started to push it like never before. And right now we do have the biggest NFT API where we resolve all the metadata. You can get all the owners, you can get all the assets, everything from our NFT API. We have Solana API for getting tokens and NFTs from Solana. We have EVM API. So if you want to learn more about that, go to our website, go to documentation, and here you can read all about it. So let's say you want NFT API, you go to the reference here and you can even try here uh, on the live website to do requests and you have already a, a demo key, uh, a demo key that you can, you can try. So definitely go here and, uh, and start experimenting. Uh, next are the SDKs. So when it comes to uh, Morales, we offer as the case for, for connecting to your backend. So let's say you have a Node.js application, you can easily connect to, to all our services via the SDKs. Uh, and uh, we also have, for example, Web3 UI Kit, which is enabling you to easily integrate with the front end. So you can just Google Web3 UI Kit and you will find it. All in all, guys, I hope you understand, number one, the importance of why we gotta build ownership online. Metaverse is all about ownership online. 
all, all of these different experiences, you got to have ownership. Uh, also, if you want to learn more, subscribe to our YouTube. We push videos each and every day. And uh, you're going to learn how to do all of this practically if you subscribe. Join our Discord if you have any questions. And uh, we would love to work together. If you are on our frequency, if you feel that what we're doing is important, you're excited by it, go to talent.morales.io and apply to our open positions. You can also go to morales.io slash MBS, which, which stands for Morales Business School, to understand how our, how our company works, our values, our culture, and stuff like that, uh, which can um, really make you understand us better and give you an insight in, into how we are as a company. So guys, on that note, thanks a lot for watching. Thanks a lot for participating and hope to see you in this wild space of Web3 building. Have a good day and goodbye, guys. Goodbye, goodbye.